All right, this is chapter three, lesson four, multiply decimals by decimal, okay? So when you scanned the lesson, we were looking for uh, real world scenarios in which you would multiply a decimal by a decimal. So what, the, what we have here from the, from the textbook is that sometimes if you're multiplying, you, will, you can find long, uh, distance given uh, given weight and time, okay? The amount of protein in a serving of cereal. Did you have any other real-world scenarios? If you like have store, you want to get like multiple, like say you're going to the store and you want to get like, I don't know, but like, so you go to the store and then you want so, we are multiplying decimals today, okay? I want you to make sure you write this in your spiral. Write this whole thing. Do we write it on the same pages or a little bit? You can start this right, um, right after you warm up, yes. Okay? So, uh, when multiplying a decimal by a decimal, you multiply as with whole numbers, so you're going to multiply like normal. To place the decimal point, you want to find the sum of the number of decimal places in each factor. So you want to say, see how many numbers are behind the decimal in each factor, each thing that you're multiplying. The product has the same number of decimal places, okay? So in other words, if you have four digits behind the decimal, part, the decimal point in the problem, how many numbers are going to be behind the decimal point in the answer? Four. Is everybody clear? All right. So, so here, if we look at this example up here, this four and two tenths times six and seven tenths, each of those factors has one digit behind the decimal. So, that's two digits behind the decimal, which means once I multiply, I'm going to have two digits behind the decimal in the answer. All right, so here we have three and six tenths times uh, five hundredths. Okay, so 3.6 times 0 0.05. When you multiply, you're going to multiply like normal, okay? You just multiply like normal. So here we have 3.6 times 0 0.05, and when they multiply, they multiply like normal. And to place the decimal, to place the decimal, they have to say, okay, here we have one decimal place, one digit behind the decimal, right? One digit behind the decimal. In the second number, there are two digits behind the decimal. So in the answer, how many digits are going to be behind the decimal? Three. Three. So you always start counting from the end. So here, one, two, three, and there is your decimal. And your final answer. Is everybody clear? Yes. Perfect. All right, for example two. Now this one you're gonna write in your spiral, right? Okay, we have 112,000 times seven and two tenths. 0 0.112 times 7.2, okay? So here, we wanna see how many decimals we have behind, behind the decimal, I mean, behind the, how many digits we have behind the decimal. So, let's see. In the first number, how many digits behind the decimal? Three. Okay. In the second number, 7.2. How many numbers behind, the, how many digits behind the decimal? One. One. So, altogether, we have four, four. four digits behind the decimal. Okay. So, now, 
we multiply like normal. So we have 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 1, 2, 2 times 1, 2. If you want to do 2 times 0, you could do that too and put a placeholder right there. Okay? Then we do the next one. And remember, we're switching over. So I switch over. If you wanted to put the place value, your placeholder right here, you can. Okay? All right. So then we have 7 times 2 is 14. Carry the 1. And 7 times 1 is 7 plus 1 is 8. Then we have 7 times 1, that's 7. And 7 times 0, again, placeholder. Right? And then you add. So we have 4, 6, 10, carry the 1, that's 8, 0. Now, where is the decimal going to go in my answer? Um, your name is Jake. Four twenty seven point of the eight. So it's going to go in front of the eight. Very good. So we need to have four numbers behind the decimal. So one, two, three, four. And there is where your decimal will be in the answer. So your answer is 864, 10,000. All right. In example B, you'll see that we have a trailing zero, right? When you have a trailing zero, those are, those are not si significant zeros. Those are not significant numbers. So you can just leave that out. So here, your final answer is 0 0.206. That's 206 ten thousandths. Is everybody clear? Yes. Yeah. All right. So Nx is 0. There's that word again. Nx is 0. If there are not enough decimal places in the product, you need to annex the zeros to the left. Okay, to the left after the decimal. So, make sure you write that in your spiral. So, for example three, we have one and four tenths times 67 thousandths, right? Now, when I multiply, um, I like to put the number that has the most digits on top, like they did right here. And we can do that with multiplication because multiplication has a commutative property. Commutative property means the same, it means it's the same both ways. For example, 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. So we can flip them around if we want to. Okay? Now, here we have in the first number, in the first factor, we have 1, 2, 3. We have three digits behind the decimal. Right? In the second number, we have one number behind the, di uh, behind the decimal. One digit behind the decimal. So, you multiply like normal, you multiply like normal, and then we need to have four digits behind the decimal in the answer, right? Three plus one, four. But if you look here, if you look here, when they multiplied like normal, that's what they got. Nine, three, eight. Right? That's what they got. That's not enough. So that means that we had to add another zero over here to the left. We had to annex another zero to the left. So this is the zero that they annexed. You see that? So that they can put four digits behind the decimal. You got it? All right. So now this is the example that you're going to write. All right. So we have 
um, 45 hundredths times 53 thousandths. The first number has how many digits behind the decimal? Two. The second one has three. So how many digits are going to be behind the decimal in the answer? Five. Very good. Has everybody got it? Yeah. All right. So. So again, we're going to multiply like normal. Okay? We multiply like normal. So, 5 times 3 is 15. Carry the 1. That's 12. That's 13. Carry the 1. 3 times 0 is 0. Plus 1. 1. Okay? Then we've got... 5 times 5, that's 25, carry the 2. Then 5 times 4 is 20, plus that 2, that's 22, carry the 2. 5 times 0 is 0, plus the 2, and then we have it. Okay? And now, here, look, if we put all these other zeros, it doesn't matter because we're going to be annexing zeros, right? So, when we add, we've got um, 5, 8, 3, 2, 1, 2. How many numbers were we supposed to have behind this decimal? Five. Five. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the decimal is to be right there, right? Mm -hmm. So, what do I do with that? This blank space right here. Mm -hmm. annex zero. You annex the zero. Very good. So we are going to annex the zero. And then, of course, I like, and it is a common practice for you to have the zero in the front. Is everybody clear? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome.